Yo, what's up everyone? My name is Andrew Warren, and in today's video, we're going to be talking about some pretty huge news recently released regarding Tesla stock and the company just in general. Just to give you some hints regarding some of the different news pieces that we'll be talking about today, for one thing, we're going to be addressing the Axel Springer Award show that recently had a really high quality interview with Elon Musk, and there was a lot of insight about Tesla, and then even topics outside of Tesla and SpaceX in general that a lot of us are just simply interested to hear some of Elon's responses for. Now, what we'll be discussing regarding that is mainly FSD and Level 5 Autonomy and its release date and then also we have a recent study done in China on the autopilot systems in which Tesla did very well in terms of the ranking and then we also have some more news regarding Tesla and the LG Chem battery deal and then in addition to that a recent email sent by Elon Musk that we'll be talking about as well so as always of course if you enjoy the Tesla news videos please make sure to smash that like button but just taking a look at the current movements for Tesla stock today the share price is currently at a value of $582.93 per share and in the normal market hours today, we had a minus 2.73% drop, which was minus $15.94 from the share price. And then in the after hours, we are currently at plus 2.48%, which is plus $14.11 added on to the share price. And also, we won't be discussing the recent price target upgrade by Goldman Sachs, where Tesla got a $780 price target with a buy rating that changed from neutral to buy. We won't be discussing that for today's news video since I just posted a video regarding that, but in general, General, I just wanted to mention it because that is another really big news piece for Tesla stock today as well. Addressing the recent Axel Springer Award interview with Elon Musk, I haven't seen the full hour of the show, but I did watch the part where they gave him the award and then also the full interview with Elon Musk as well. And I wrote down a few notes on Google Docs as I was watching this interview, just some major things that I wanted to emphasize to you all if you didn't have time to watch it or if you just haven't watched it yet. So I wrote down a few things. In one right here, it starts off with a quote by Elon in which he states, I'm extremely confident of achieving full autonomy and releasing it to the Tesla customer base next year. Then he continues to talk a little bit about regulatory approval, and then the host makes sure to clarify and says, and we are discussing level five autonomy, so really full autonomy, and Elon Musk says, yes, yes. Then I wrote a quick note down here that says, Elon discusses regulatory approval, saying it's hard to say when it could occur, referencing that EU regulators are the most most conservative and he added to that mentioning that they only meet every six months and then another direct quote by Elon Musk that I wrote down says yeah but I think at least some jurisdictions will allow full self-driving next year so the important thing from this alone is the fact that Elon Musk says I'm extremely confident of achieving full autonomy and releasing it to the customer base and also like I said the host made sure to clarify that we're talking about level five autonomy so I really want to emphasize the fact that if Elon Musk wasn't really certain about this I don't think he would say I'm extremely confident especially since he's already received some criticism for full self-driving being pushed out so I think given that criticism and the context that Elon Musk is really confident that this can occur and even in past times where he stated that he thought it would be in 2020 and much earlier I still believe that he truly thought that could happen but as we know things can come up and especially with these corner cases and things like that there's the small details that have to be perfected before this can completely be rolled out and those long tails can take up some time with the machine learning but even given that this does seem pretty realistic based on the fact alone of the tremendous progress that we're already seeing with a limited FSD beta right now considering that it's so much better even right now compared to when it was first rolled out because they're constantly making improvements and changes based on some of the different corner cases and driver experiences in which the AI is adapting and learning more with that machine learning. So we're already seeing a huge amount of progress even with the limited beta right now. So within this time frame of 2021, I honestly don't think it's too far out of reality. However, I'm making sure not to get my hopes up, but this doesn't seem too unrealistic given all the progress that we've seen just with the limited FSD beta right now. And then also I just added a few fun things to the end of these notes right here as well. For one thing, I wrote down that Elon Musk says that they will have a big gigafactory opening party and then at around midnight it'll be techno until dawn so you gotta love it it's nice to see that side of Elon Musk and then another thing that mentions as well is that Elon mentioned he would be sleeping in the Berlin gigafactory conference room during the night of that interview and like I wrote down here classic Elon grind and to me this just represents the perseverance that he has and the dedication that he has to this mission and to his businesses and it shows that nothing has changed with this drive and you love to see it honestly because it just shows that he 
wants to make sure things are done correctly. And out of everyone at Tesla, I trust Elon Musk's vision the most. And I'm honestly happy with the fact that he's making sure that things are done the correct way in Berlin. So this is good to see in my opinion. Moving on, we recently had this research released by 42 Mark and this was done in China. This page has been completely translated, but at the top it says 42 Mark is an assisted driving evaluation system launched by the number 42 garage. It uses standardized test items to more intuitively show the real ability of each car in assisted driving. At the same time, Garage 42 will be retested after the vehicle's driving assistance system software is upgraded, so stay tuned. As you can see, we have the Tesla Model 3 at the number one spot, and I believe this is an older software update as well, but it says total score 283, congestion scene 44, special scene 59, night scene 38, rainy scene 38, auxiliary lane change 50, curve scene 15, human computer interaction 21, and automatic parking 18. And I just want to note the difference between the first place and the second place, which is the BMW X5. We have Tesla's total score at 283, and the second place one is at 208. That's 75 points off. And just take a look at the difference between the second place and the third place. They're actually pretty close. Third place and fourth place are pretty close. And then we have fourth place and fifth place. Those are a little bit wider of a difference. And then the fifth place and sixth place are wider of a difference. But you get the point here. When it comes to like the top four, the Tesla Model 3 at first place has a big score difference between second place, and that's something to certainly take note of. And I didn't see the Tesla Model Y on this list, but I simply think that's because it's not currently being produced in the Shanghai Gigafactory, and the Chinese market hasn't had as much experience with that one as with the Tesla Model 3. That's just my impression as to why the Model Y isn't here, because I would expect it to be pretty similar up there with the Tesla Model 3. Next up, we have another article by Reuters, and this is titled Exclusive, LG Chem to double China battery capacity to meet Tesla demand. And this says it's by Reuters staff, so as always, we greatly appreciate this information. And it begins by stating South Korea's LG Kim plans to more than double production capacity of battery cells it makes in China for Tesla electric vehicles next year, EV sources said, to keep up with its US clients' growth in the biggest car market. It continues by stating the firm, a supplier for Tesla's Shanghai-built Model 3, will also ship its increased output from China, as well as Korea to Tesla's factories in Germany and the United States, said two people with knowledge of the matter, signaling an increased role in the supply chain of the world's leading EV manufacturer. Another quote states, Tesla simply doesn't have enough battery cells, so LG Kim is going to more than double China output. And then it continues with another statement that says, quote, we're continuing to expand capacity for cylindrical battery cells in response to growing demand from automakers, but we can't comment on specific customers, and that was by an LG Kim spokesman. And then it continues with the subject of the Model Y stating, LG Kim will invest $500 million over the next year to raise annual production capacity of 21,700 cylindrical battery cells, a type used by Tesla, at its Nanjing plant by 8 gigawatt hours, the local government said, without disclosing current capacity. And then expanding on that, it states, the two people told Reuters the plan involved increasing the number of production lines to at least 17 from 8. With that article, it discusses increasing the production lines by more than double and I know that there may be some people out there that would view this as a bad thing and they're thinking about vertical integration and all of those things involved that we commonly see with Tesla but this is simply just a necessity given the time being and given that Tesla is working on the 4680 cells and future mass production for those but in the meantime this is just something that has to be done out of necessity because how can we get to the point where Tesla is producing 4680 cells at mass volume unless they're sourcing the necessary batteries needed at this point in time to drive up production and get those profits that will be necessary to contribute to this future battery business of vertical integration with the 4680 cells. So like I said, although this may be viewed as a bad thing at this point in time, Tesla basically needs as many batteries as they can get their hands on right now, given this tremendous S-curve adoption rate that will occur with EVs and with the disruptive innovation regarding robo-taxis as well. So like I said, they basically need as many batteries as they can get right now, and there likely will be some beef between different companies who are trying to source batteries with the limited resources available as these battery companies are starting to ramp up a little bit more and produce more every year. So like I said, it's just a necessity for the time being to get Tesla where they want to be in the future with that extra level of vertical integration with them producing their own batteries. Finally, we have another article regarding a recent 
email sent out by Elon Musk, and this is by Laura Kalatini. I hope I'm saying that right, but as always, we greatly appreciate the information. Just jumping into the key point of this article, which is the email itself, that's what I really want to analyze. And so as it states from Elon Musk to everybody, and the subject is costs are extremely important, and this was sent out on December 1st, and it includes the statements, quote, at a time like this, when our stock is reaching new heights, it may seem as though spending carefully is not as important. This is definitely not true. When looking at our actual profitability, it is very low, around 1% for the past year. Investors are giving us a lot of credit for future profitability, but if, at any point, they conclude that's not going to happen, our stock will immediately get crushed like a souffle under a sledgehammer. Much more important, in order to make our cars affordable, we have to get smarter about how we spend money. This is a tough game of pennies requiring thousands of good ideas to improve part cost a factory process or simplify the design while increasing quality and capabilities a great idea would be one that saves five dollars but the vast majority are 50 cents here or 20 cents there in order to make the electric revolution happen we must make electric cars stationary batteries and solar affordable to all thanks and great working with you as always Elon. And the reason that I included this in this video as good news is because to me, this tells Tesla is once again trying to encourage affordability and also cost efficiency, which is absolutely going to be a competitive advantage in the future if they can achieve that. And certainly given the specifications of a Tesla as well, if they can drive the costs of Teslas down with cost efficiency and saving money here and there, and as Elon Musk likes to say, the best part is no part, making things more simple and also cheaper while still providing a valuable product, then it's really going to be hard for any other company out there to compete with them when we're talking about a vehicle with good performance, good battery efficiency, good software, good autonomous technology, and also one that is affordable for customers to purchase. I personally see this as a perfect mindset given all of the new EV companies that are starting out right now and at least trying to compete with Tesla. And for Tesla to be able to maintain this lead, they need to drive costs down for affordability. And it seems that this is exactly what they're doing. So in my opinion, this vision is great to see with this email. I just wanted to share some of these news pieces with y'all because I thought this was some valuable information and definitely that news regarding a potential release date for level 5 autonomy for Tesla in 2021. So as always, please make sure to smash that like button if you all enjoyed the video and also feel free to use my referral links in the description below. It supports the channel and you'll also get some free stocks. With Robinhood, you can get a free stock and with Webull right now, you can get four free stocks in total, two for signing up with my referral link. Those can be valued up to $250 and then you can get a another two valued up to $1,600 by depositing $100 into that Weeble account. Just wanted to let you all know about that since it's basically just nice passive income with minimal effort. But anyways, I hope you all enjoyed this video and I hope you have a fantastic rest of your week.